you know. <laughs> it's definitely a gulag at our house. Hello there, Abundant Life. I believe we are live. I we see the live. little red. Oh, we're live. live. We're okay, live. we're live. Hi. Hey. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our 11. Uh, uh, Pete, Josh, and I are going to be hosting you today for the few minutes. And make sure to join us uh, again tomorrow. I think uh, Pete's doing tomorrow's 11. Yep. And then we have our interactive, of course, on Wednesday night at 7. And it's such a joy to have you part of that. Um, I see somebody's on there. I don't know. Somebody pull up a phone. Mine's uh, actually doing the broadcast, so I can't <laughs> see it from here. <clears throat> but... Um, I'm going to let uh, Pastor Josh kind of give us a lead in here to the topic that was preached on Sunday. It was so good to have church in the parking lot. That was really fun. And we're going to be doing that again this Sunday. And uh, so I hope that you're able to come out for that at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Bring your car. If you didn't come this week, um, hopefully you were able to see some of the pictures. But we parked here and we had a, a stage out there and people tuned in their radio to 89.7. And um, we just uh, we just sang and had the word and prayed together. And it was it was a really good time. It was really good to see everybody, uh, to see several faces, not everybody, but I had a good portion of them anyway were there. And of course, we still have our broadcast. So if you're unable to get out or you still uh, are unsure about getting out, it's OK. Uh, we're all, all the content and everything is still online. A um, little bit of different venue, but it's still the same content. So. Anyway, Sunday was a powerful uh, extension, really, of, of what we really believe the Holy Spirit leading us into with this idea of, of awakening and, and allowing uh, His Holy Spirit to draw us in a closer relationship with, with Him, to become deeper um, intrigued and uh, engaged in the things of uh, principles of holiness from God's Word and, and chiseling things perhaps out of our life that don't need to be there and, and um, allowing God to have his way. And that topic yesterday was awakening through worship and to worship and what real worship is. So you want to kind of talk about that a little bit? And Sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll jump in and uh, you guys can stop me whenever you, whenever you want. We, uh, we were discussing the, um, the first text we did, and I know you covered a lot of yesterday in your um, 11 pastor was the part in John 4 where Jesus is talking with the woman at the well and you really did a good job of kind of going through all of the background even of what kind of led to this discussion. And um, Jesus tells her finally, he says, listen, but the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is looking for those who will worship him in that way. For God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he's answering her, her because she asks him a question of, well, the Jews say that we have to worship at Jerusalem, and you know the Samaritans. I think believe it was Mount Gerizim that they believe that they were supposed to be worshiping at. That you know that Jacob had set up and all this kind of stuff. And uh, Jesus is saying, "Listen, he's trying to get her to understand that um, it's not about the place that you worship, right? It's not about whether or not you come to a building or not, or you come to a certain place or not. That there is a spirit of worship that is to be evident in our lives, and that we are to worship God in the truth of who He is. That we don't, you know." worship these odd concepts of God, but for the truth of who he is, we worship God and that, that we have a spirit of worship that is, that is through our life. Um, you know, it was one of the main things we talked about Sunday that all that we do is to be poured out in, in worship to God. And I think that, um, one thing we could talk about, I guess this morning is, um, why when we have a true understanding of what worship is, why does that lead to then awakening or revival in our lives? That's good. And, um, I think that one of the things is, is that when, we truly understand what God has done for us and, you know, who he is and and that we were created with the idea of worship in mind, right? That that's why, that's what we were designed to do, um, that when we live in that and operate in that, it pushes us closer and closer and closer to God, and which is, you know, kind of one of the big indicators of revival or of an awakening is the closer we get to God, I believe, you know, we become more and more revived. And Certainly. That's good. Well, I, you know, I contribute as well, you know, like we were saying yesterday and totally in line with that. A lot of the distractions from the Samaritans came uh, because of the introdu introduction of all kinds of gods. So think about a culture in which there is not as many um, opportunities. There are more there are there were opportunities, but there weren't as many ways to introduce 
sinful things or um, idolatrous things. Idolatry and the sin of that and worshiping other things was still evident in the culture, obviously, very much. It was very pluralistic with the Samaritans. In our culture today, there's such a busyness in culture and with the Internet and everything now, everything is thrown at us like a million different ways, right? Um, living in a simpler culture where you're working just to get the food for the day and, you know, it, it, it doesn't have as many things to entice and pull. So, you know, I really believe that in part this is very prophetic what Jesus is saying. That, you know, mm -hmm. as time goes on, people will be drawn mm -hmm. away from, and I think we're living in that time now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of other things to look at and, and the way we worship, the introduction, the way we do church now even is, has got a formula to it that um, we've had for many years, for a couple of centuries, really, that we do church this way. And it, even that can become an idolatrous thing where, it's all about the performance or that rather than coming from that deep, you know, I love you, Jesus feeling. One of the things that I draw from this interaction with the woman at the well is her situation is so stark. She's the bottom of the bottom of the bottom and everybody knows it. Yeah. And so for Jesus to introduce to her now, wait, worship is actually relationship. It's not where you do it. It's not even how so much it's who you do it with. Everybody else in that community, um, they all have reason to think, well, I'm not as bad as somebody else. Or it's, mm. what I do is, I, I like a little of this and a little of that, and it's not as bad because look at all those other people. And so we, it's easy for us all, all of us, to lose sight of because I'm not as bad off as the next guy. <laughs> That's good. That I don't have it wrong. Right. Right. So you know, I'm a good guy. I'm going to make it to heaven. Right. I mean, I, I lived a good life. I, I, I even did what you wanted. Right. <laughs> but those that have the most stark loss already can, are more a actually able to probably receive the real truth of Jesus actually makes that point at one point. Yeah. He tells a story of two men who were forgiven, and he says, listen, who do you think loved him more? And they said, well, obviously the man who was forgiven more, yeah. you know, was that yeah. that created a greater sense of love and, and of worship for the, the man. And I think you told the story in your 11 yesterday, and I was thinking about it the whole time I did this, of the church that wrote the, um, you know, I'm coming back to the heart of worship, where yeah. they actually, I believe they actually stopped the singing yeah. portion of their they services did. for a while because they realized it had become such a performance. Yeah that um, they said no. And in the midst of that, they wrote that I'm coming back to the heart of worship because it's, it's really, it's all about Jesus. And I think when we shift our perspective, and it's unfortunate that I think in church culture today, we've done a lot of that um, to, to make it just about the singing part of it and the performance element. And we love certain churches because their worship is so good when really their praise or their singing is so good. Yeah. We, you know, we, yeah. we're not there I, to, yeah. we're not there to truly judge the worship side of it. Um, and we have to be careful of that because Jesus looked at the Pharisees and they would be someone whose worship looked good from the outside. Right. Sure. But his comment to them was, this is a farce, yeah. right? This is a satirical, yeah. you know, this is a sarcastic expression of what worship is true. He goes, this is a joke to me. Mm, you know, yeah. if you don't, a farce is a, is a play written to, um, to in satire of something. Right. Um, so, I mean, maybe you don't like the movie, but I mean, as space balls is to star Wars or, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, any of the Mel Brooks movies, <laughs> yeah, which I'm yeah. not yeah. a proponent of people going and watching. <laughs> um, but you know what the Mel Brooks movies are to the real yeah, thing is yeah. what their worship was to true worship yeah. of God. And he's, you know, he's cautioning them, listen, this is not how you're really supposed to be. Well, you know, even this where we do it at, I mean, I, you know, people still believe I got to bring my friend to church, to yeah. the pastor. Sure. Yeah. Only the pastor's prayer is going to be strong enough to somehow help this person. Mm. And, and we still believe that, you know, it's uh uh, and that's been pervasive forever too. I just watched a documentary on the life of John Wesley. And he was a he grew up in a he was a pastor's kid, mm -hmm. and then and then he got saved radically saved after being a clergyman, mm -hmm. and then he got shut out of all the churches. So he didn't have any other choice but to preach out in the outside. But to him, it was repulsive. He's like, you can't preach truth of God outside of a church. People's souls can't be. 
he thought it was the most repulsive thing. He ended up what riding two hundred fifty thousand miles on horseback yeah. in his life to preach outdoors. It's once yeah. once you get a handle on this, the reality of true worship, true relationship, is not a place. It's not a method. It's a, you know just get past that to and the songs that John Wesley wrote. We don't sing many of them today. They're they uh, got lyrics like that. I might kiss his bleeding feet. I yeah, mean, well, his brother yeah, and his brother Charles. Charles was. They, they wrote they hymns wrote because hymns. they wrote those hymns because people couldn't read. Yeah. So you could preach it all you want, but yeah. they can't go read notes, and so they taught them to sing yeah. the and truth. Yeah. Full of doctrine. And full of doctrine. And we, now we sing holy, 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 good, 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 good God, uh, and we well, read over and over and over. Seven Eleven worship. <laughs> Seven words, eleven times. <laughs> not, not, I don't want to. I don't want to draw that into the way that someone's worship is not yeah. worship if we're yeah. not if we're singing that way. Obviously, I'm greatly moved when when I sing. You know, oh the blood of Jesus, oh the blood of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus, yeah. and I repeat it over each time I sing it. The Holy Spirit makes it a deeper expression sure. of my my feeling. I'm. You know, it's like when we don't know what to pray. The Spirit helps us pray, uh, you know, with groanings that can't be understood. There you go. There, there's a, there you go. There's an inner part of me that's engaged with God. So it's more than that. But um, uh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I actually had a comment. Uh, Paul Berglund commented, this is why we're seeing so many fall away from faith today because they do not understand. Uh, they do not have a relationship and understand true worship. And he said good stuff. And it, I mean, it is true that people, we've equated worship with singing, right? And so we, we totally then, in a way, we get to dismiss our lives and our actions then from yeah. this, right? right? When true worship is everything, and I know we talked about this Sunday morning, the way you treat other people can be worship of De God. Oh, you know, definitely. if you treat Ouch. people the way that God wants them to be treated, yep. you're worshiping God, yep. right? Jesus said, let your good deeds shine out so that all men might glorify your Father in heaven. Well, so he's saying what you're doing, the good works that you're doing is worship to God, not just whether or not you can sing. Because if being good at singing is all it takes to be good at worship, I'm going to fail. Yeah. Every exactly. single day. There's a reason that Pastor Pete and I mute our mics on Wednesday night during the yeah. worship portion. Some people, some people are, are, that's their place to, to help lead that. We understand that. But the heart and expression of worship doesn't make the person, that, because they can sing better, a better worshiper. Yep. It doesn't equate them or put them on a higher plane yeah, of you. spiritual existence, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. worship is is a genuine. Some of the most, you know, that's why the last will be first in heaven. You know, it's it's not about being seen; it's about glorifying God with what we have. So that's good. Mm. I guess we're probably at our eleven minutes. We're, yeah, we are at thirteen. We're minutes at thirteen right minutes. Now, so. Well, uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, so blessed that you did. Make sure to join us Wednesday Night Interactive at 7. We're going to dive deeper into this, maybe even more into the account of Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman and pull some principle from there. And appreciate your comments. We always read them online. Maybe we just say a blessing on your day. God bless you and uh, enjoy his presence and his peace as you live out loud, a lifestyle of worship to him. So God bless you. Bye.